Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on another webinar Wednesday. My name is Stephen Phelps, and I'm the marketing manager here at Acumen. And today we have Steve Tompkins to show you the CIS configurator. In this session, uh, we'll go through a few slides and then demonstrate how the CIS configurator can make it easy for your sales team to quickly configure, price, and quote complex products within your Stage 300. Uh, please be aware that today's webinar will be in listen-only mode and would last around one hour long. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat window and we'll answer them near the end of the presentation. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so I will now pass the mic on to Steve. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, everybody, or uh, wherever you are in the States, East Coast, West Coast. And as Stephen says, um, we're going to just cover very briefly a very short PowerPoint and then go into the software itself and show how we can easily create the logic and create quotes uh, in, in uh, your work, obviously, connected with Sage. So although it's a very casual and agenda, I do like to try for my own sake, cover some of the basic points that um, if to preempt some of your questions, but effectively, I'll show you the components that make up our solution and talk about the way the two systems interact and talk about the also the extended integrations we have with some of the Sage family. As you, and you'll see that as we go through to um, the next slide. So um, typically our system is working through the APIs of our system and Sage's system. We'll pull components from Sage and we'll push it up into our model builder. And we'll talk about that in the next slide where we will define the rules, create the logic, allowing salespeople to create quotes with accurate um, with, with accurate items and accurate pricing. Um, so the three components, we'll talk about them um, shortly. We do have, uh, additionally to obviously Sage, we have a recent integration with Service Manager. We have a client who's using that um, in the um, spas. They sell spas, they don't make anything, but they offer a service. And of course, auto simply, and we can pull in, um, you know, information and use the auto simply and, and feed auto simply the material, et cetera, et cetera. Typical customers are customers um, who have lots of options. What we've learned over the years, we've replaced on many occasions companies or clients using Excel to do their quoting where they've obviously got their variables embedded into Excel. The challenge becomes how you can control the versions of Excel and ultimately uh, embedding it into a centralized system allows everybody to create the same quote without replicating or, or producing any mistakes. Excel, um, I think America and Canada and the world rings on, runs on Excel. We all use it. There's no question of it. But when we're talking of quoting with products that have complex uh, rules with um, many variable variables or permutations, our solution is a great alternative because of the features that I intend to show you later. So the first component, and I say component, it's really what a part of the complete offering. I, I like to split it up to give you um, an idea of what you're getting for the, with the product. So the first component is what we've always called a model builder. It's really your product builder. It's taking your product, adding it to the system, and adding the logic, creating rules, dependencies, assigning items that will ultimately allow a salesperson to simply answer the questions, which will result to pricing. In the model builder, it's very intuitive. Um, we position or recommend training no more than 10 hours, and that should speak volumes in itself on how easy it is to create the logic, follow the system, and follow obviously the use the tools that allow you to put the, the logic and dependencies in the system. It's worth mentioning 
that this application is only used by the product expert of the organization. It's not used by the salespeople. So obviously from a user, um, it's restricted. We, we, we can restrict anything in users, but again, the product expert would create the logic in the system. And once that's once this product or this, your product has been signed off, in other words, it's made active, it becomes visible to use and it becomes the, well, the configurator is able to be used then by the product or the salesperson rather than the product expert. We will touch on how we create the logic um, shortly. But again, just to reiterate, the product expert spends their time in the model builder to create the questions, the answers, the logic. And the salesperson, depending on who that's, or the user, depending on whether it be a salesperson, internal, external sales, whether it be a customer, whether it be a distributor, they can log into the system and create an accurate quote for themselves and ultimately submit an order based on the price list that's assigned to the customer in Sage. As you can see on screen, um, there's four quadrants and it's entirely up to the company how they use the configurator. They do not have to use images. They can be added at any time in the future or simply not used. Um, questions and answers, it can be as simple as two quadrants where you just ask a question, you know, looking for an answer. Or you can display, as this is on the bottom right, the components um, as they are added based on the configuration. And there's lots and lots of options allowing you to hide the quantity, hide the price, hide the description. There's, there's, there's many, many, many um, options in the system. And the third component is a web portal. It's the point of entry that is uh, obviously the salespeople, customers would log into the system. Again, this is seamlessly integrated with Sage pulling data in real time, pushing data in real time, using the pricing, using the components of Sage to ultimately allow CIS to put together a component list, a bill of material, pushing it back into um, Sage. There are two different types of paradigms we offer with um, Quote Builder. We could, we've always called it Quote Builder internally because I send out quotes, obviously, for people um, purchasing our system. But the two paradigms consist of either a one-to-one -one basis where a sales an, an organization has a sales team or an extra tier is switched on to accommodate their distributors, their resellers, et cetera, et cetera. And the reseller has the ability to have their users and it also has the ability to have their own print or their own report with their logo so effectively if we take as example one of our customers who makes trailers they only sell their product through distributors or resellers so the dealer as they call them will lock into the system the system can see its dealer one two three the dealer will have their customer and they will generate, they will create their own customer on the fly. And then they can add components themselves. And um, they can mark it up if, if required as well, if allowed to, I should say, not required if allowed to. So there's different paradigms, but the beauty of it is you can see all of the activity in the system, all of the users' activity, the quotes, the orders, whether the quote has been uh, revised, submitted. So again, we'll, 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 we'll go through that shortly. Our goal at the end of the day is to create or to give the ability to you as the client to give tools to your salespeople that can create something very quickly, very accurate, well, accurate by at least. And obviously, should you require or should you want to show a graphical representation of the product as it's been building, you can do so. To accommodate that, we support different types of images. Um, the most common are JPEGs, bitmaps, TIFFs, and GIFs, et cetera, et cetera. But over the last few years, we've put in the ability to use transparencies that allow you to build an image on the fly. 
there are prerequisites on how they're presented or how they're configured. But nevertheless, if you wanted to show a product in a different color, instead of using or, or having to take an image of every single permutation, you can use transparencies and assign a transparency to an answer, taking out the thousands of graphics that are needed, but obviously just using a PNG. So in a summary or in a nutshell, um, I always like to share that our system is very intuitive. It's been known as very flexible over the years and we continue to make it easy to use. We continue to develop and add tools that help us to make adding logic to the system quicker. As I mentioned earlier, training is in a short time. It's a number of hours, which again speaks for itself. It's not days, weeks or months. Um, once, the system, once the system is loaded with your logic, it's easy to use, it's easy to maintain. And again, with whether it be um, Service Master, whether it be Auto Simply, or whether it's Sage, we can feed all three. So that's my introduction. It's very difficult for me to recognize that this is a, you know, uh, Steve is just doing the talking and not answering questions, but I can see some are being created. We'll hold on those until the end. So now I'm going to go to um, the web portal. You can see it's accessed by a subdomain. Um, customers of ours use it with a public domain or internal domain, like, uh, you know, in, on the internet internally. Um, so it can be used either way. And once we log into the system, myself being a sales manager, which is probably not the highest, there's an administrator that's quite that's higher than myself. But as a sales manager, there are system there are settings settings behind the scenes that would allow me to see all of the sales quotes, some of the salespeople, all of the salespeople, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is a hierarchy behind the scenes with um, obviously for how you as an organization would want your sales team to work or to visibility, excuse me. And that's a similar for dealers. As you would expect, you wouldn't, as if a reseller logs into the system, they would only see their quoting or their activity of quotes, orders that are created. And in the Sage world, the dealer becomes the partner record, the customer that is connected to Sage. And we don't report on and we don't see the visibility in Sage of their customer. But for today's presentation, I'm focusing on a one to one as if we've got an internal sales team or potentially a customer who obviously wants to buy from us. You can see um, in the system, there's some very simple reporting on status, on date range. We also have an analytics tool. The beauty of a configurator is when you when you create variables and you write variables to a database, you can report on that on those variables. ERPs have a limitation because clearly they, they bring in the items, like the bill of material. In our case, if you wanted to, um, we have a customer who makes hair pieces or wigs, but in that case, they wanted to um, say, well, you know, how many wigs were made in this color, this length, this type of hair, et cetera, et cetera. And believe you me, there's many. So again, for the purpose of the demonstration, we'll go and create a new quote. So this is the quote edit screen. Again, there's a number of things that as a setup um, on a new instance that we can work with you. For instance, as simple as do we allow the user, do we allow the system to add um, customers on the fly? Typically, that's a no, but typically we do have customers who work with our system. They go to trade shows and they might say, well, I'd like to talk to someone who's just walked off the street and give them a price. So we would just allow them to do that and add the default list price, allowing them to quote, to quote something. Or they can be switched off and then we would just feed, obviously, from everything that comes up from, um, comes up from obviously, um, Sage in the system. I think most of you would recognize some very simple Ronald English, you know, demonstration data uh, coming across. Again, whatever's in, whatever is in um, the database of Sage will flow up into our system. We'd, I was searching there, but I apologize. We do support uh, obviously different currencies, as you can see there. Uh, that's what I was searching for. Um, we, so we can actually do currencies, 
We can also do language. Language is not a truly multilingual tool, but we can certainly pull data descriptions and we can have different reports that would allow you to generate support in a different language if it's so populated. When I save this, again, it'll create a new quote number. It'll also bring the ship to by default. It'll bring the customer info, customer record across. So anything in Sage will pass through into our system. And these are the mechanisms for us to use the pricing, et cetera, et cetera. Again, it's a business rule. Do we allow the client to add multiple ship? Uh, ship twos and if so how do we write it back so that's a decision that we make with you on setup and i believe over the years we've made um uh, in the connector and i talk of this connector as the two the system that connects to the uh, sage to cis there's a lot of things we can do and i'm sure there's a few things we can't do but nothing has defeated us as yet these fields description note fit except note internal external they use the defined fields that we switch on that you can have access to that you can name it how you want to etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's the same as the delivery due date you might have a default period you might have a default expiration date or expiration uh, uh, validity period you can control all that behind the scenes the order number will come from sage obviously the, there's a timestamp for the date um, these can also be um, logged. So, for instance, every time a user makes a note, you can log it in the system, similar to how the change log is. Every time I save something, it will track my, my saves in there as well. So, again, it's, uh, it, it's on the setup and how we, you know, on the day of we work with you to, to, to preem what is needed within the system. On the pricing, again, we've got, we can have, uh, you can expand this out. You can have pre-tax items. You can have post, you can, sorry, you can have taxable items, non-taxable items. You can have discounts, pre-tax, post-tax. You could have delivery charges. You could have um, insurance calculations. You can, it's unlimited to the amount of user-defined fields we have in our system. And of course, we map that to Sage to make sure that obviously the correct information is being pushed backwards and forwards. We also have the ability as a drop down to have probability. We also have a drop down from a freight. So if you've got freight tables and obviously we, we want to populate them or connect to the system, we can do that also. And then we come down to uh, this area uh, in reverse. We can, if you've got stock items and items that are literally, you know, you sell independently, you can obviously, you can put that, just choose the item and put it on. Uh, into the system. So if I go and choose there, there's, there's a, 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 I assume a car. You can have adjustment if it's to user permission. I've got that user permission, be a sales, sales manager. So if I want to be able to mark it up or discount it down, I can do so. Um, I can also add a comment to the line item. So again, this flexibility just from uh, adding stock items and clearly I can add the, uh, change the quantity as well. But the purpose of today is to discuss how we can quote something that is very configurable, that has lots of variables. And today I'm going to just focus on two products. And as you can see here, if I start typing, it will touch type so I can just type in trailer, press the configure button, and it will launch a new window, which I would treat as a template that has been created by the product expert in the model behind the scenes and has made that template active so it's visible to the users in quote builder as you can see as i mentioned earlier four quadrants these quadrants can be switched off behind the scenes so if the customer the client says we don't need graphics they can just obviously be switched off as as the item this can be just to show a graphic depends on how you want to use it the reason for showing this very simple but powerful uh, product configurator example is if I was to select the curtain sided trailer, you can see a couple of things happening dynamically. I'm bringing a thumbnail, I'm bringing in a larger image without any wheels. I'm bringing in the relevant item that matches this particular trailer. And you can see if I choose the van or if I choose the flatbed, everything will change dynamically based on my answer. The reason I use this particular demonstration model is because on height number, on, sorry, on question number 10, there is a height question. And as you would expect, with each of the van or um, curtain sided, 
that would be a requirement. But if I choose flatbed, you can see that the question disappears. That's just showing you my first dependency to show you that if I choose this, then something is not necessarily needed. If I go forward, my next question defaults to a twin wheeled axle, meaning four wheeled per axle. And you can see the next question is, what's the quantity or what's the number of double axles required? But if I was to change that to a single wheel with obviously two wheels of, at, per axle, you can see that the next question is single wheels with a default quantity of two. I can change that quantity. And as I change that quantity, you can see, again, from a graphical representation, we're pulling in an image to represent the trailer with four axles, with single whips, with obviously two wheels per axle. Certainly the quantity. Um, in a second, there'll be tires, but it, it will work out the quantity based on the answers. And if I go back to the, the twin one, and you can see there, based on my answer, it'll just, same thing, change the image, update the quantity list, update the material list, and update the price accordingly. Again, once I've made my selection on tires, it will change the um, tire quantity and obviously the tire price based on the, the uh, tire uh, selected. It's also worth mentioning that in this example, I can have Continental and Bridgestone, but if I change my single back to single again, you'll notice that Continental is taken out and Firestone is given as an alternative. So again, it's just showing that there's rules in the system. You can also see that the wheels themselves have changed. So again, it's dynamic and it's adding um, items based on answers selected and logic that is driving the configuration. Again, if I was to choose no, it would simply take out the next question. If I choose yes, you can see that first, second and all available. It's driven by this question or this answer. So if I change that to four, you can see it's dynamic and it will position or give the options of four uh, ABS in this example. Ranges, whether it be inches, millimeters, yards, uh, et cetera, et cetera, we support all sorts of uh, units of measure. So, but if I was to say, can we do a 58 foot trailer? Well, in this example, the answer is no. The product expert has put a constraint of anywhere between 42 and 53 feet. And again, based on that answer, it will start working out components. This is my example of flooring and roofing. And again, you can see it's dynamic because if I change that to the maximum 53, it will update the quantity based on the calculations that's invisible to the user behind the scenes. Similar to the width, similar to the height. And then once the last questions have been answered, the configuration complete will, little uh, warning will come up to say it's complete. And in this example, you can see that we've collated a list of items based on the answer selected. It's worth saying, if you want to, if you want to hide any of these item numbers, any of the quantity, any of the pricing, it can be done so. All I want to say in this particular quadrant, we've also got a condition. By default, we are saying that these are required, but the trailer motor for the landing gear and, well, actually there's two options there, both the same or different item numbers, you can actually have them as optional extras, which I'm going to show you shortly. And again, you can go back, you can go back and change it if you want to change it to uh, curtain size to van. If you want to send it to flatbed, you can do all of that. It'll take out all of the non-relevant questions. And the moment you select one that needs to answer it, it to be answered, it will just present a question mark. You just need to click on it and it will then, or oh, sorry, quick, continue to register it. And then you can pull it back into the system. And once you pull it back into the quote edit screen, similar to before, depends whether you want your salespeople, your customers to see line item pricing. These can all be switched off. So you can either roll it up into just one line item, or it can be rolled up, or sorry, it can be displayed with the quantity, with pricing, without pricing. Again, very flexible indeed. All on each line item, you can have them, you can have adjustment. Again, if you've got a you've got a user permission, you can write a comment on each one also. 
And then at the bottom, you'll notice here, well, let's just show you out of the box, first of all, because by default, I'm just going to print that customer quote that I've created by just answering some very simple, but answering the questions very quickly to get an accurate product to generate a quote. In between creating a quote, we have a menu, which is typically set up by the client to how they want the look and feel of the report that we're going to generate. I mean, I could literally, in this case, I think it, well, it's set by default to hide the contents. So I would imagine if we just click on this and as it expands, as it loads, it will just have one line item with the price, certainly carrying the image through. And by default, we've got some terms and conditions. But if I was to do again and uncheck the hide contents of products, you'll see straight away it behaves differently. We've actually got the question, sorry, the items on index in a line item basis. In this example, they're actually the pricing switched off. So again, from a flexibility point of view, there's some current controls behind the scene allowing you to set up how you want this out of the box quote to work. And as you see here on the third page, I've got some sample terms and conditions. Should you wish to add any documents, like for instance, we'll just go and add that particular brochure there. You can add them in the library and make them default or make them selectable by the user to obviously pass through and attach to the quote. Or if you've got something from the desktop, you can certainly reach out to the desktop and add something in a PDF format and, and assign that to the quote as well. Or you can simply assign images, Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, anything other than a movie, you could actually assign to in the system. You can't attach it to the quote, but it can be visible in the system. You can download it from the system. Okay, so I wanted to show you those two optional extras or optional items. If I remove both of them, instead of now being part of the quote, it will be beneath the price or the bottom line, as I would call it. So it, it positions it in such a way that it would be, you've got your trailer, and if you wanted these options, actually, for some reason, they're not showing. <laughs> That's interesting. But again, you can have them that normally it, it, they would say there's two items and it would say how much the price was. Maybe those two items are switched off from a pricing point of view in a report. Again, there's flexibility in the system. Okay. So once the quote is created, and again, um, if I wanted to do some external notes uh, or internal notes, you know, I'm just going, whatever I put on here, you could technically, I, I guess, write an essay and it would bleed over into the quote itself. Um, I've just got in here, uh, you can just see that I just put in there, you know, test one. So you can have lots of notes in there. Okay, there is also the ability to add a non-stock item or an item that doesn't exist. Again, it's similar to this rule where you're creating a customer on the fly, but we have the ability to have add a custom item. For instance, one of our customers years ago said, well, that's okay, we sell a product, but sometimes we have to go and buy things in and we want to be able to do that. And obviously we can do that by, it's just called add custom item. So once we've been, once we're happy with, we've created a quote, uh, we would submit it. The submitting is not yet submitting it to Sage. We're basically telling the system, let's lock the pricing up. We will give it a, a submitted status. And when the salesperson or the customer comes back, they will see that there are no navigation tools allowing the user to change anything. But you'll see the top, now we have a revise button. We can simply order it. But when we revise it, in this example, let's say the salesperson or the client says, we want to change some of the variables. It gives it an extension, a dot one extension. You can keep going, there's multiple revisions. There's no limit, I believe, to the number of revisions that can be created. It allows the user to say, actually, we don't want that item there. We can just change this. We can change the variables. We might say we want two of those. We might say we want to change the length of 45, whoops, 45 feet. The point being is you don't have to start, you don't have to start from a new configuration. You just go in and it will update the uh, components based on the new answers. In the dashboard, you can see 
that it's shown with the latest quote is shows with a revised status. If I check on include revisions, you can see that the previous one was superseded with a different value, but you can see again that there's some changes made. You can always copy a quote previously. You can take that quote, you can go into it, you can change the quote, the, 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 the company to a different one. And what that will do, if there was a different price list assigned to it, it would actually register and it would change the pricing accordingly. And then ultimately, once, we've ha once we're happy with that, we would order it. Before we do that, I'd just like to show you one other configuration. Uh, actually, we just delete that one there. Um, so because we talked about the second one that I want to show you is introducing what we call smart part numbers. And a smart part number is where we have a particular product where it has infinite variables and therefore the need to have all of the bill of materials uh, created for every permutation is immense. So doing this way, what we do is effectively based on an answer selected, you can see that the prefix of C or whatever it is, changes based on the answer selected. And again, if I change a different set of uh, seats uh, or with a different color, again, you can see it's updating the smart part number. It's certainly updating the graphic because the graphic is using transparencies. And then we can use this as the reference as the bill of material number, pushing that back into Sage. In the lighting industry, um, we have well, customers who use it because of you know, LED lighting and the temperature and the color, the lens, it's quite incredible. And it saves them such a long, it's a lot of time. They don't have to create all the permutations of the material. Okay. So once that's put in there, again, you can do multiple configurations. You could say, well, if there was this one, but what the second one is a slightly different color, you would just copy the configuration. You just open it up, change one of the variables, and or as many variables as you want to, and you can see it will update accordingly. And again, when you print that customer quote, in this example, there will be two. Uh, this is very high resolution. So it just takes about 20 seconds to load two, I think, because the, the graphics that this particular company who use it, well, their key is, pre is in presentation. So they, they, they use transparencies, I would say, to the nth degree. It's in quite incredible how they use it. Maybe it's 40 seconds, I don't know. But again, let's just wait for it to, to render. You'll see it come across because there you go. It just, so you've got your header information. Again, it's just, it's just uh, summarized as two with two different smart part numbers. But again, you've got a, a high res graphic with slightly different seats, as you can see there, coming across. Okay. And then ultimately, if we just order it, it will go down and uh, we can have a submitted date. We can have an order date. Uh, I haven't got this connected to Sage, but it would pull back the order number and place the bill of material correctly in order entry in, uh, in Sage. OK, so that's my overview of the quote builder. And I think we're doing OK for time. I will now just segue to very quickly, but not so quickly, just to show you how we create logic in the system. Again, to reiterate, this is what a product expert spends their time in, not the sales team. And when we open up the model builder, you will see all of the products that's been created, all of the products that are inactive with obviously the, the Red X. It's worth mentioning, as I mentioned before, it's dynamic. So the moment a, an item is put in, into Sage, it will be available in the model builder. And as you can see, in this example, there's only less than 900, but as soon as an item is added, it will, um, it, for, in Sage, it will flow up into the system. Once we've got the items in there, I'm going to copy one of my, or the, the, the trailer uh, product I showed you. So we'll copy that. So in, in itself, you've got the ability to take some existing logic and obviously copy it to a new model change the name, we can make it inactive whilst we're working on it clearly. Um, but I want to go through and show you the sequence and also 
that um, logic behind this particular model that's um, been created. First of all, we can import all of the questions using an Excel spreadsheet. We can import the answers using a spreadsheet, and we can import the dependencies, the exceptions, the relationships also in a spreadsheet. So uh, in a simple sense, I'll show you manually, and I'll show you how we would do it, not physically how we do it, but just intimate how it would work. In this example, the first question is a trailer type. And as you can see, by default, it's, it changes, it, it sets the status as a single select. If it's multiple, multiple select, it'll, it'll go display radio buttons. Each radio button will have, if an image is assigned to it, it will behave accordingly. If I go back to the single select, as you'd expect it, it's just you know, one answer per um, the, the drop down. So for, again, for my purpose here, I'm going to add a new trailer, quite original, I know. I'm going to, I can either make it default or I'm just going to drag it to the top for ease. So it's going to be, and we'll make it the new default uh, as the default answer. So in this example, my next question is I've got, as I showed you earlier, the type of axle. It's either a double or a single. Let's say hypothetically that this new trailer that I've just added does not or cannot have single axles. It can only have twin wheeled axles. So all I do is I control click, click on this little yellow button, and it adds what we call an exception, meaning when a user selects this answer, do not present this answer in any of the questions or any of the answers uh, going forward based on that exception. So you can see now my new trailer just takes out, just displays the twin one because there isn't two choices. Just to prove like I did earlier, here you've got choice of single or double, but the uh, exception is done on the new trailer. So that's a single exception. And again, as I said earlier, you can build the logic into the spreadsheet to import those exceptions. But let's say, let's say we want to go deeper. Let's say if the new trailer that was selected and an example twin wheeled was selected, well, let's say we can only have the four, four axles as the default. So basically what you do is set what we call a multiple exception. So you can go through the whole system. You can do uh, exceptions on questions. You can do exceptions on multiple answers. So effectively, it would just take out the non-relevant questions or answers based on an exception that has been set up by the product expert. Again, just to prove in this example here. So if we go new trailer, we choose double. You can see it defaults to four because the two and three has an exception. So that's how we, we, we set the logic. And we can do that both in a negative and also a positive sense. The negative is when we choose this and this, you can't have that. The flip side of that, if we choose this, this, and this, and it's a positive exception, you have to have that, or you have to have it, you have to present it that way. Also, um, the trailer, if I wanted to show what that trailer looks like based on double and four, um, or even with Bridgestone tires as well, you can set what we call a relationship. And a relationship is when a number of answers are selected, one, assign the, um, assign the items that are relevant, you know, that are relevant to it. So let's just go like that, something like that to add to it. And then you can pull the quantity from any of the calculations that are put in the system from any of the answers that have values assigned to them as well. And then, and as well, you can also assign an image. So based on the answer selected, we'll display potentially what that product looks like. Okay, so that's the showing you how we condition. And again, same as, same as the exceptions, we can use a spreadsheet to import those um, relationships into the system. And if I go slightly further down, of course, we had a, a, a length question. So if I was to move this, I don't know, all the way up to the top, um, let's go right to the top of, as an example. On my uh, length, we can build calculations and we can also build ranges off these. You can see there's my min and max and there's my unit of measure. 
but I can start if I wanted to, I could build a calculation. I, I know I just drag that to the top, but if it was down here or back where it was originally, um, you can actually pull values into the equation. So for instance, in this example, now I've moved it, I could bring the length, uh, sorry, this is the length. I could bring the quantity of single axles or axle type into it. And I could start building quite, you know, uh, work out the area, work out um, quantity of wheels, et cetera, et cetera. That's how, how we do it. So if I go to another one here, you can see here, we're working out something, we're pulling in the values, we're, 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 we're labeling it floor area, and then we're assigning the quantity from to an item. It's worth mentioning, we also support, we do support fractions. You can see here, we can do decimal, uh, decimal fractions or imperial fractions as well. And again, once we've created and the calculations, um, we can we can do. Uh, I was going to show you ranges. So, for instance, you know, if it, we can build ranges off here, if we said, you know, in this particular case, it's twenty ninety six. So, if ninety six to let's say a hundred, whereas this one might be a hundred point one to whatever the maximum is, hundred and eight. You can say when a, when a, when somebody uses this, they can't have this particular landing gear. So you can make an exception on there. So it's quite powerful and allows you to build the logic behind the scenes and obviously which are invisible to the user. One final thing before I hand, I'd say that I think I've nearly finished is on the electric vehicles, I talked to you about transparencies and you can see here in the relationship tab, this is the image that is displaying that is assigned to an answer. And it's just using a same size image across the board, but when this is uh, put in, it will overlay that area. So again, the system allows, as I said, static images, whether it be bitmap, uh, GIFs, TIFFs, et cetera, et cetera, JPEGs, but you have the ability also of adding and using transparencies. Okay, so I think now that I've, I hope I've given you a quick but uh, informative over of a view of the system. I think now if I take a break and ask if the ask uh, Stephen if there are any questions coming in through the chat window. Perfect, thanks, Steve. So we actually had a few questions that came in uh, while you were demonstrating, so we can go ahead and get started on a few of them. Um, for those of you guys who have any additional questions, uh, feel free to write them in the chat option and we'll read them out loud and we'll have Steve answer them. So the first question that came in uh, says, what modules of Sage are required so that the CIS configurator can work with Sage? Uh, that's a good question. Um, we certainly need order entry. And I've got my notes somewhere, which I thought were at my hand, but clearly not. Order entry, accounts receivable, and inventory inventory control are needed. Perfect, thanks. Um, a few others that came in, it says, uh, can this be linked uh, with Sage C, uh, CRM? Uh, yes, it can. Um, I don't know at what, what stage we're at at the moment. The answer is yes. Um, it is, it, I don't know ex exactly where we finished it, but yes, yes it can. Perfect. Um, another one is, can we copy a quote if the customer wants to compare two different options? Absolutely. Yep. So I think, as I showed you earlier, it's just literally, if we were to copy this one, you can either do one of two things. You can add a configuration, a second configuration or a third, or absolutely you can revise it, or you can just literally copy the quote. Yes, you can. Great. Um, looks like another one just came in. It says, uh, can uh, CIS uh, send the bill of materials to auto simply or does it have to go to Sage? It can either or. Um, we've uh, written both the connection to either, depending on your manufacturing, we can create the bomb that feeds Sage or we can create the bomb that feeds uh, auto simply. Both of them, yes. Perfect. Um, I think I'm just going to wait a few more seconds to see if any other questions come in. Um, if not, we can go ahead and wrap it up early, but we'll give it just a few more seconds. Okay.
All right, looks like we have one more. It said, uh, you mentioned the smart part number on the presentation. How does it work with Sage? Um, I did mention that actually. I mentioned about lighting companies, LED lighting use it. Um, so it's a good question. Um, John, who is our Sage guru, would probably uh, tell me off for answering it this way. But we know that Sage has character limits and we can add the smart part. I think the character limit is 24. But I think we've developed a way that it comes into order entry and we're using a description field that has the 60 character limit as opposed to the 24. And as yet, I don't think we've surpassed 60. Um, if it is, I think that's another you know, something that we'd, we'd, uh, we'd get over. But we have developed a way that we can create the smart part number, the smart, well, certainly in our system, and we can certainly pass that into Sage. If, um, you know, later on, if there's anybody in particular, uh, if we need to dive under the covers in more detail, I think from a technical point of view, if we do a one-on-one, -on -one, we could have our uh, Sage guru on the line to answer that exactly how it should be addressed. But it works. Great. Um, I think that is all the questions that have been coming in. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up a little bit early. Um, if you guys do have any additional questions or would like to uh, know more information, about the CIS configurator, uh, please email acumen at am at acumenfl.com um, or you can give us a call at 407-965-2411. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest Sage content and videos. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys all again soon. And thank you, Steve, for the great presentation. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Have a good Stay one. Stay safe.